Good afternoon. Today we are going to talk about maintaining the victory. And so we just came out of a powerful weekend and many people got set free and there was healings and we give God the glory for that. We love it when we do these victory weekends and people are transformed and God is glorified in the earth. But I want to talk about how to maintain uh, victory in your life. And so one of the scriptures that I'm going to use talks about when we get set free and um, we get a victory and how the enemy always wants to come back. And so in Matthew 12, 43 through 45, I'm going to start there. It says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. And then he goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be with this wicked generation. And Jesus is uh, teaching there. He's talking about how the enemy always wants to return to the place that he left. And so familiar spirits, always they always want to come back around. And when, they, when they're kicked out, they're evicted out of your life. Okay, they don't like uh, that. They they want to come back to the same place they left because they're familiar there. They're comfortable there. And you notice that the Bible says that the house was swept clean and put in order. And so you have a responsibility now because the spirit of God swept the house clean. And so you have a responsibility to fill the house with the word of God, to fill the house with uh, Holy Spirit, uh, to walk holy with the Lord, to uh, get in the word more than you were in it before. Whatever area you get freedom in, you have to maintain the ground that you took back. And so the devil doesn't like losing ground in your life at any area. And so you need to maintain the ground. And so... He he wants to be come back in the house he left because he is very comfortable there because more than likely he's been there for generations. And so um, there's three areas that the enemy uses to snare souls. OK, one is temptation. It is the act of enticing or luring one. And so you uh, when you get freedom and you get a victory, you got to be beware of the temptation of those familiar spirits to drag you back into bondage. And so you have to shut the doors of your past. You can't go back into old waste places. You can't hang around bad company that corrupted good morals, people that um, enticed you and those kind of things. Not everybody is going where you're going. And so you have to beware of temptation. You have to clean your natural house. And so a lot of times um, people have articles or things in their home that um, maybe have soul ties attached to it or certain things, certain movies, maybe just different things that drew you into or, or pulled you into temptation. So now you have to clean your natural house, anoint your house. We tell people when they get set free, they need to go home and, and ask the Holy Spirit, is there anything in this house that needs to go? Is there any open doors to any articles or anything that I have in my home? And so you ask the Lord, he will show you that and you get rid of those things. You don't hang on to them. You don't keep them. It's not worth it. Okay. And the second thing is accusation. It's a charge of wrongdoing, imputation of guilt. And so in Revelations 12, uh, 10 and 11, it says, I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, now the salvation, the power, the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come. He said, for the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. You see that? He's been thrown down. He who accuses them before our God day and night, and they overcame him, speaking of the accuser, because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. And so we're overcomers because of the blood of the lamb. And the confession of our mouth. And so we 
We understand that you are now in a place of victory. You've gotten victory over that. You're maintaining it. And so when the enemy comes with accusations, all right, because that's what he uses is an accusation. That's one of his names. And just because you got free in an area doesn't mean that he's not going to come back around and try and convince you that you didn't get free or he's going to try and say some things. And so in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, great warfare scriptures, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destructions of fortress we are destroying speculations and every lofty thing that's raised up against the knowledge of god and we are taking captive every thought to the obedience of christ and we are all ready to punish disobedience whenever your obedience is complete and so when you read that and you see you're talking about casting down and so these imaginations these voices these things that come against you you've got to you've got to make them obey the Christ in you and so you rebuke them you use the blood of Jesus you realize that you're not going to entertain that and so when he comes and accuses you says you know you know you didn't get freedom or you know you're not you don't have authority and all of those lies that he uses so you you rebuke it you do not um, entertain the lies of the enemy and so you cast them down and and I'm, I'm telling you it's a very powerful weapon is the blood of Jesus and so you need to use the blood of Jesus over your mind we teach people to take communion um, daily and it's not just an Easter you know which we don't celebrate Easter but it's not twice a year okay it's not those kind of things where it's just every now and then I'm going to take communion communion is a lifestyle and so you need to be taking communion now that you have gotten victory in an area and the other thing is deception okay he comes to deceive you deceive is to mislead one by false appearance statement or delude and so that means that he will use deception things are not always as they appear and so you need the power of the holy spirit to illuminate truth in your life do not be deceived by the enemy james 4 7 8 says submit therefore to god resist the devil and he will flee from you draw near to god and he will draw near to you and he says to cleanse your hands you sinners purify your hearts you double-minded so when you're maintaining ground you can't allow double-minded spirit to come in and you can't vacillate between two opinions yes you got the victory and the victory is yours so don't listen to the lies of the enemy uh, that'll try and tell you that you you don't have the victory and so you warring a good warfare the ground you take back you hold it and you maintain it and you notice the writer says to cleanse your hands that means that you know your clean hands and a pure heart you walk holy before the lord in these areas that you got the revelation and you uh receive the victory submitting to god submit your life to god your life is not your own resist the lies resist the enemy and he must flee okay and so uh second peter 2 9 uh, states when the lord he said the lord knows how to rescue the godly out of temptation okay he knows how to rescue you so when you're feeling a temptation you begin to call on him you begin to ask the holy spirit empower me show me where is this coming from right now and so he will lead you out of it he will rescue you from it the second thing uh scripture first corinthians 10:13 it says no temptation has overtaken you but such as is common to man but god is faithful okay he is faithful it says who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able but with with the temptation he will provide the way of escape also so that you will be able to endure it so no matter what satan will try and come or the those familiar spirits will try and come to bring to you you are an overcomer and there is a way out a way of escape jesus the greatest example of everything he demonstrated power over satan in luke chapter 4 you can read that chapter for the sake of time but every time satan came to jesus to test him right jesus spoke the written word of god against him he passed every test by doing that that's a part of your submission to god right resisting the devil is using the word of god you're submitting to the word of god you're using the word against the enemy 
uh, to be able to stay free. And so Jesus told his disciples to watch and to pray always that they would not enter into temptation. So you need to uh, have a prayer life every day you pray every it's not an option as a child of God it is a lifestyle and so you need to be praying every day reading the word of God um he told them you know your spirit that their spirit was willing but their flesh was weak so we have a spiritual arsenal that will build us up in strength in our spirit man Okay, so we have everything that we need as a child of God uh, to maintain a victorious lifestyle. Amen. We have what we need. And you have to know, too, because we, you know, we came out of this. Sometimes uh, your deliverance can be little by little, according to Deuteronomy 7. Little by little, God deals with our enemies. Sometimes people get a whole lot all at once. Sometimes it's a little area here an area there but you maintain what you receive another weapon is being thankful it's so so very important to be thankful for what God has done in your life and and to confess and to decree a thing let it be established continue to thank God for your healing continue to thank God uh, for your deliverance continue to give him thanks for what you have received and so that is a huge, huge weapon of mass destruction is being thankful to the Lord. Amen. And so be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's just a few things I'm pulling out of this booklet. In this booklet, by the way, um, is, there's a free PDF file on our website, and they'll put that up for you, and you're welcome to download it. It's just a simple tool uh, for basic cleansing and deliverance that will help you. And in the back of it, it it's weapons of warfare to maintain your freedom. And so we talked about the blood of Jesus using the name of Jesus. Okay. You have the power to use the name of Jesus uh, because you have his spirit against the enemy, uh, renewing your mind daily in the word of God. You need to go to a uh, Bible believing church. Okay. That has some anointing in it. You need to become a part of a local body. You need accountability in your life. Everybody needs that. It's very important to have Christian fellowship, especially when you're walking on this journey and you're trying to maintain victory. You're going to need somebody. Islands will run out of resources. Um, the blood of Jesus, we said that. Renewing the mind, relying on the Holy Spirit uh, to control your, um, not to control you, but you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you into right behaviors now. You keep doors shut in Jesus' name. Um, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 talks about putting on the armor of God. Those are weapons. You need to be, you need to have the armor of God. Every piece in place uh, in the armor of God and also avoiding old waste places. You don't want to go back to dead, dry places, okay? You get set free. Some people in here got set free from a lot of uh, control and witchcraft and different things. Well, you're not going to go back into places that have control and witchcraft because you are what you eat and who you associate with. You will get some things if you're not careful, and so you have to make sure that your associations are walking with the Lord. Um, we said develop a life of praise and thanksgiving. And you got to learn to exercise your authority. It's one thing that I see in the body of Christ is many people do not understand their sonship and their authority in Christ. And so you need to begin to exercise your authority in Jesus Christ because because you're going to have to have it to deal with the enemy when he tries to come back around and afflict you again. Another uh, area, you got to avoid offenses and unforgiveness. That means that the enemy will come to try and snare you in an offense, especially after you've maintained the victory. Okay. He's going to want to come back around. He's going to want to cause conflicts around your life. But remember, use your weapons of prayer, take authority over him and do not be snared or trapped by the spirit of offense. 
Stay humble, another weapon. Don't become prideful in the victory you maintain. You can have a confidence in Christ, but you always remain humble after a victory, okay? And also, um, I was just, I was just had that thought about, um, Elijah. He had a great victory, didn't he? And talk, you can read that in Kings 17 through, uh, 19, those chapters, a great victory against the enemy, but he ended up hiding in a cave afterwards. And so, you know what, that's something to look at because the enemy, when we get a victory and we, we make progress and we gain ground, the enemy sometimes likes to come back with a camera attack he wants to come back with we call it sometimes there's backlash or there's a retaliation so you're not in fear but you don't let your guard down because you had a victory okay you need to be careful of that stay humble uh, under the hand of God also build up your personal intimacy with the Lord Jesus okay worship prayer fasting still lifestyle we teach all of these things taking communion so all of these are just some weapons that you can use to maintain your victory and so father i'm just going to pray for you right now so father i just thank you father for those that have had a victory in their life father i just pray that these weapons and these tools really tools father god that they will be used lord god to maintain the freedom the cleansing uh the revelation that they have received father god I ask that you would bless them that you would cover them in the blood of jesus father we thank you for the finished work of jesus christ for everything that you're doing in their life father i thank you that even as they gained a victory father god that that they're going to continue to walk in victory father and pursue the purpose and the passion that you have put in their life father god and i thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus, and we give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.